We have summarized to you in our Worst Punishment series despicable things men have done to each other in the name of justice, often a very disconcerting kind of justice. Many of the punishments we've discussed were used at different times in history and in different countries, with each purveyor of pain putting its own spin on the punishment. The Chinese, for instance, flayed the flesh of an enemy's back in ancient times, but might have just flayed a person's face as a stern telling off. While a laisse majesté crime in 14th century Europe could have gotten you flayed from head to toe, then castrated, and then beheaded for good measure. Yes, these shows might be hard to stomach, but we think the barbarity of the past shouldn't be ignored. And so we'll start this series with a torture that's often said to be the worst kind of torture that has ever existed in recorded history. We say that, but it's hardly easy to invoke the superlative when you have people getting their skin peeled off after being boiled in a pot. Maybe burning at the stake was better than modern white torture, at least it was over with quickly. So we won't say what's the worst and certainly won't attempt to tell you what was the best, but we'll start with rat torture only because it's so darn outlandish. With this kind of official devilment, we have to separate the myth from the truth, or at least try and back up the truth with substantial facts. What we can say with assuredness is that one kind of rat torture was perhaps the incidental kind of punishment. That's because you can find in the Tower of London something called the Dungeon of the Rats. Writers in the Elizabethan period said what would happen is the prisoners would be kept in the dungeon, and when the River Thames rolled in, the water would spill into the cell. Prisoners were less than fond of this time as the water would bring rats with it, and those rats would occasionally gnaw on the prisoner's flesh. We assume the guards knew this was happening. Maybe this was better than being locked into a tiny cell called Little Ease, because the prisoners in this place had to stay for a long time, crouched in a painful position. It could have been worse after a stint with the rats, you might have gotten sent to the rack. We're told in the 17th century though, those bloodthirsty English elites cleaned up their act a little bit. Okay, now it gets even worse. We'll talk about the ultimate rat torture, or perhaps the ultimate rat tortures. The book The Rise of the Dutch Republic, A History, Volume 1, by John Lothrop Motley, is considered a classic book. In this book it's written that during the Dutch revolt against the Spanish Habsburgs in the 16th and 17th centuries, the master torturer and leader, Diedrich Sonnet, was found of doing the worst kind of thing imaginable, with a pack of vermin. This man, it said, would take a bunch of starving rats and place them on the sliced belly of a prisoner. They would be kept on the stomach with an upside down bowl. So far, so good. It was probably slightly ticklish, and maybe a rat took a chance bite now and then. But then, the fun started. For Sonet at least, when hot coals were placed on top of the bowl. This not only burned the victim, but made life inside that bowl unbearable for the rats. Hmm, where to go when there is no escape? We're told what would ensue is the rats trying to burrow into the man's stomach to escape the heat. We're not sure though how far the rats got, or if this was a torture until death, or if it was only a way of extracting information from a prisoner. You can be sure the prisoner didn't hold much back if that was the case. The website The Torture Museum, which is hardly a barrel of laughs, tells us this. This method was very effective in terms of interrogation, and the offender would feel a powerful combination of disgust, fear, and pain. Often he would confess without waiting for the rodents to dig their holes. A similar kind of torture appeared in Season 2 of Game of Thrones, but the pottery bowl was replaced with a metal bucket. We are also told in many parts of medieval Europe you might have found something similar, but the rats would be placed in a cage on a prisoner's stomach, and the opening in the belly would not be easy enough for the rats to start eating away at the insides. The problem with this this is we cannot find any sources citing historical examples of when this happened. But if you consider that Europeans back then had head crushers, breaking wheels, knee splitters, and the utterly horrific Judas Cradle, it doesn't take a stretch of the imagination to believe someone might have said at one point in the past something similar to, hey Everett, how about we make a load of hungry rats eat his insides? You might have heard his coworker reply, oh Jeffrey, that's a great idea. Do you know where we can find a small cage and a bag of rats? As you well know, if you want to find creative kinds of tortures, just read about ancient Rome. Oh, the things they did with animals there. Imagine being sentenced to death by being sat on by an elephant, and to make it worse, in front of a cheering crowd. Or what about being sewn into a donkey? But we're also told that Emperor Nero was particularly fond of having animals burrow into people. Some sources tell us that an animal such as a cat, a dog, a small one we presume, or indeed a rat or rats, would be placed in a cauldron. That cauldron was heated until the crazed animal would do anything to get out. Unfortunately for some people, the only way out was a person's stomach that was placed next to an opening in the pot. We're told by other sources that there was another Roman spin on rat torture, and 
this was simply emptying lots of starved rats into a barrel where a man was waiting. The ravenous rats would get to work, and the more blood and flesh that came off, the easier it was to eat him. When the rats were full, more starving rats would be poured into the barrel. We imagine this would go on until there was nothing left of the poor man. The Torture Museum tells us that later in India, there was a similar interrogation technique in which a man would be forced to wear rat pants. These were pants with lots of space in the groin area, but not much down the legs. The hungry rats would feast on the crown jewels until the suspect was willing to talk. While such torture we would like to hope is a thing of the past, it's said that rat torture was actually a thing not that long ago. During Brazil's military dictatorship days from 1964 to 1985, it's said scores of people or dissidents were subjected to horrific torture. While detractors often seem to have a knack at making folks disappear, we're told in Brazil in those days they were also brutally tortured. The strange thing is, The Guardian wrote in 2014 that many of these Brazilian military men went to the UK to learn better torture techniques. But what they learned there was that psychological torture works best because it can make a prisoner slowly spill more beans. But this wasn't anywhere near as gruesome as the torture we've so far talked about, in that the torturer would use rats or snakes or even crocodiles just to scare prisoners. We guess just being covered in rats or having a croc for a cellmate is scary enough. Maybe those Brits were onto something. Do you think this is the worst kind of torture imaginable? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Most Painful Things a Human Can Experience. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.